It feels like such a long time ago when I got around to reporting my Mirmakata Vola Francis Fox. While this report never made it into a video, I usually film all my reports just so that I have some footage for future videos in case I need them to update. Speaking of updating, Orchid Samurai Nina san has asked for an update for specifically the Myrmecophilas, but I thought why not extend it to anything Myrme that I have in my collection, and that would be four orchids. So, in a way, <laughs> this was a good thing. I just went about my business on the patio and repotted without actually putting out a video, and here she is. Thank goodness I've got this footage to show you. Samurai Nina san, I hope you don't mind me adding other orchids into this anything that would have Mirme in its name. I wasn't really planning on repotting my Francis Fox just yet because she still had room in the pot for another season, but then when I saw that her roots were failing, the new roots, yep, I had an issue with that, and I thought, well, I'm gonna do it now while it's still nice and warm, exactly what this orchid likes. And besides, she had all these pseudobulbs in the back, the orchid was looking a little scruffy, and I figured, why not? So I went in. And yes, it looks a little bit of a shocker with regards to the root system, but <laughs> wait, I am quite pleased with this root system because in some ways you can see branching. And this orchid specifically has roots that are pretty stiff and they look brown and nasty, but they are viable. So there's no need to be chopping around like some kind of a woman possessed cleaning up a root system. The minimum of getting airflow back into the pot was my priority. And I'm just going to reference the question of Samurai Nina-san. Did they bloom? Well, this one did bloom a long time ago when she had the right winter conditions with me, but since then she hasn't bloomed. However, what I am trying to focus on mainly is to get what could be symptoms of Fusarium out of her system and well, it is said, I don't have proof, but it is said that the majority of Francis Fox that are on the market, they do have Fusarium in them. And for this reason, I just want her to grow out, whether she blooms or not. Maybe one day she'll bloom for us again, but I would like her to grow a little bit healthier. The decline of the back bulbs has nothing to do with my suspicions on Fusarium. It's more how the root tips start to blacken the moment they get a certain length. When I see something like that, I am always immediately suspicious. But I did appreciate the firm roots that I had on the root system, the existing root system, and that I could transfer over into the new bigger pot in the hopes that the roots that are growing now will hopefully extend better, being covered with Lekka. And thankfully, thankfully, I can update you on this repot because we have more root growth coming. So I'm misting the surface of this pot only on one side on a regular basis just to make sure the Lekka doesn't go dry and dehydrate new roots. This orchid needs all of them. <laughs> and I really hope that she grows them long enough, soon enough, before I have to put her indoors on the shelf while she still has the right light levels because there is no jiggling, no moving this orchid at this point in time. And I've already uncovered the next eye that is looking lovely jubbly and I hope that that will start its own growth cycle pretty soon seeing as the growth of this season has matured. She was absolutely not stable in the pot. It was just freaking me out with the root tips that are of utmost importance. So I secured her to the support with a little bit more vengeance and I hope that it is good enough. So moving away from a repot, this is a quick update of my Myrmecophila tibicinus. She lives on the bottom shelf on the east side of the patio, and while I do try to protect her from direct sun, uh, sometimes the curtain switches around and gets caught, and then she has too much sun. And while this orchid can handle a lot of sun, um, not to the point of burning the leaves, of course, which I did not manage to keep in check. Also, what I keep forgetting is that this bowl it is a self-watering setup, this bowl does not have any microfibers in it and the base of the bowl should actually sit in water in order for the wicking to go up into the bowl and I keep forgetting that. And that's why this orchid never really got enough water this season. So she's been declining, her pseudobulbs are turning brown. I've got the growing point still intact. There are no new growths on this orchid this time of year. This orchid will grow new growths as we head into fall. Great! The time of year where this orchid needs a lot of light, but because of my temperature drops, 
she can't live outside anymore. And with all of that in mind, it is just my hope that this orchid comes through to the next spring season and gets through the winter without me losing her. Seeing as I've never really done this orchid justice in the past, <laughs> this time around I actually wired her into the pot because I thought she would just root in readily and happily. I would place her on the surface of the Lekka and then cover and fill Lekka all around. She would blow out of the pot. That is how strong my winds are. Anyway, her first two years with being wired in looked better, but this year I kept forgetting that there was no microfiber and my watering was not adequate enough. But these orchids are pretty tough and she will bounce back with no issues at all. Speaking of wiring in, the same goes for my Mimicophila thompsoniana, which I also filmed the repot because you can see that there are two leads, one left, one right, and then there's one right up against the edge of the pot. So this whole bowl thing is not working out for this orchid. Meanwhile, yes, both of the Mimicophilas that I have would prefer, much prefer, to be growing mounted. However, I can't do that. The size of the mounts would be insane for one. And where do I put them during the winter months? I do not have the hanging space. That's not going to cause a mess against the walls. Anyway, it's a whole thing. So into a rectangular window basket she goes. Now you'll see the problem with this window basket as we go through the video. But what I did, first of all, before I even started, I put two holes into the sides, right into the middle of the container because I did not want that container to flex and bulge out. The intention here being to wire the two ends together so that the form will hold and of course, if I can get the height of the orchid right, then that wire would also help the orchid stay in position in the pot and not blow out. So unwiring the orchid was the first thing to remember because I was once unmounting an orchid. I completely forgot that I had wired her onto the mount and I was struggling getting the orchid off the mount, thinking she had rooted onto the mount so amazingly, whereas it was the wire that was holding me back, back in the day. This time I remember remembered she was wired in. Not only because I could see the wire, I had to rummage around a little bit to expose it. She came out easily enough. <laughs> Yikes, not exactly well rooted in either. This self-watering pot also did not have any microfibers in it, but I watered her more because she had active new growths growing. And for that reason, you know, water fertilized. And that's why she doesn't look as bad as the other Myrmacophila does. But her root growth is a shambles, considering it's been two years and they are vigorous root growers. So something isn't quite right. And I hope we can correct that in the rectangular setup. So in positioning this orchid into the rectangular setup, I had two leads, of course, and one lead was growing roots that had stopped, probably because there wasn't enough humidity, there wasn't enough misting, but I'm not going to mist the growing points at such an early stage because I don't want them to rot out either. These roots were also up against the pot, nothing was finding itself into the old pot, it's a whole thing. But the other side is also, well, you know, we got to it in time because a root nubbin is starting and with that I made sure to keep the orchid as low in the pot as possible. She is not a climber per se but what I wanted to do was cover the rhizomes, the base of the rhizome as best as possible with Lekka that I can then keep misted because now she's out of the threat of rot phase in order to encourage any new roots just to go straight into the Lekka. And it worked out beautifully. <laughs> my wiring, my two for one wiring concept here. I can keep the pot from bulging out, which will stop the orchid from shifting around because I have to shuffle this pot if I do during the winter, outside, inside, outside, inside, and so on and so forth. And the orchid is back secure in that pot. 
But this pot, as I mentioned, is a nuisance because it doesn't have a reservoir like the other one does. It has a little plate at the bottom. I wasn't going to put this orchid into a 40 centimeter pot and then we'll have to readdress her again in a year or two. And I'm hoping not to touch her for another, let's say three or four years. That's the plan. That's why I went with a 50 centimeter rectangular pot, but I couldn't get one without a reservoir. Now this one does have a little tray at the bottom, but it's a mess. I've already been schlepping this orchid away from the sun back into bright shade so that she doesn't get burnt etc and I've got constantly water dripping every time I pick her up no matter how straight I think I'm picking the pot up which is a nuisance which doesn't bode well for the winter so I'm gonna have to think about what I need to do for the shelf during the winter with the highest light I may need to put a big tray underneath and then just water or just keep misting the surface of the leka I don't know we'll figure it out when the time comes but for now I'm super happy she is solid she is dealt with that was another little headache of mine out of the way tick Fox. Moving on to the next one. My Mimico Catlia Louise Fuchs Purple. We did a repot video on her. Just going to show some previous footage while I talk about her. What impressed me the most about her this season was the size of the growth and the speed at which it was growing it. I could classify it as scary. Yes, I give all my Mimico feelers a lot of calcium nitrate. A lot of it mainly calcium nitrate as opposed to fertilizer but I've been doing that for several years <laughs> so what happened with this new growth was just mind-blowing chef's kiss the same characteristics with the root system on the Myrmecata Wolo Francis Fox they may look brown but they are firm they are viable and then I took the hint based on that new growth and as per not wanting to disturb an orchid for too long so that you know this one has never bloomed for us before Four, I then go two pot sizes higher, sometimes three, in order to accommodate what I hope an orchid's potential will be in the future, meaning how many growths, how many new roots each growth will produce, and then the longevity of the orchid in the pot. So into the middle of this huge container she went. Well, in this case, all my guesstimating and assessing the vigor of this orchid worked in our favor because she now has three active new growths starting this is insane so she's got one on the back lead which is still going to be tiny it's like the seedling bulbs reactivated not because i cut into the rhizome they just did and the front lead with the stonking new growth the two eyes are progressing the one on the left was already there when i repotted the orchid and just stopped growing after the repot but didn't fail the one on the right was behind a sheath so I've released that and it is coming out with a vengeance as well as new roots are going right down where we want them to. I call this fan fantastic i'm so happy to update you without much time in between repot and this update <laughs> the progress of this orchid it was the right call to put her into a bigger pot and not only that it is very slowly growing very slowly <laughs> emphasis on very but we have a spike growing so for now it's still active and it's still alive and what you see as white dots no they're not the minuscule scale that i'm so annoyed with this season those white spots are sugar crystals from the happy sap so we're still good with this orchid and yes watch this space because out of all the four that I have just showed you the only one that has ever bloomed in the Mirme category of my collection is the Francis Fox and it's been a while so watch this space and see if I can manage to get Mimoco Catlia Louise Fuchs purple to bloom and while we wait for all of that to happen, future updates, of course, will be posted, be it on community posts or in shorts. I want to say thank you once again to Samurai Nina Sun for the request. I hope you don't mind me expanding a little bit with my other two that had nothing to do with the Mimokafilas. Please give this video a thumbs up. It truly helps to support the channel as well as would you please subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. I would appreciate that so, so much. And thank you also for watching to the end because it gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day. On the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.